Welcome to the first annual Sandy High School Sports Hall of Fame. And this is Marty Watts. I'm working with ProView and, and our, our crew is doing a little documentary about this event. And you're going to see some of the great guys that are, not, are being inducted in the 1960s. And here's our program for tonight. And these are the guys that I grew up when I went to Inez Elementary behind Windrock and Monroe Junior High School growing up. These are the guys I idolize. And we've got some great athletes going in and two great coaches, Coach Charlton and Torgson. And so I hope you enjoy this little documentary. It's going to be fun tonight. And boy, do we have a great program. One, two, one, two, three, I've got Jim Ottman, who was my former coach of Sandia, and I drove him nuts, I know, on a couple football games, but he's here tonight, and he was on the committee to pick this, these great athletes for the 60s, and I'm going to ask Coach Ottman, what do you think of some of the memories that you have with some of these players? Well, you know, uh, uh, memories of all these players, well, I have several. I don't think we have enough time, really, to go over them, but, uh, you know, these were some great athletes, and they all were here, you know, when I was here at Sandia. And, uh, you know, it's just real honor to get them up here to honor them and, and to get this thing going with the Sandy Hall of Honor. It's been a long time coming, and uh, with Brian Weems' help and uh, the rest of us old guys here, we got it done. I, I, I think we got the right bunch of guys. There's a couple guys that nearly missed, but we're going to mention them tonight. But, boy, these guys were studs, Coach. I mean, when you look at them, I mean, they were great. Of, of the football players, we've got Jerry Spurlock, Mike Buck, Gary Allen, of course, Gary Rushing played. Which were the ones that you got to coach with of this group? Well, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here a long time. You know, I got a chance to see Gary Rushing was, uh, I believe, a senior, junior or senior my first year here at Sandia. You know, he was a heck of an athlete. All these guys are good athletes. And another thing they did, they all played two sports. Sometimes three sports, which is very uncommon nowadays. That, but uh, you know, these guys, uh, you know, football, basketball, baseball, or football and track, you know, something. So that was always exciting. They're good athletes and they like to play. And you got to know Jimmy Papan. Uh, he was he went out and sold uniforms and stuff. But you got to know him after his career. Yeah, he. Uh, I actually missed him at Sandia by one year, but you know he was a very close friend of mine and very sad to his passing a while back. Uh, his son is here tonight, all the way from California, so that's really nice to see him. You know, and he's just another one of those guys. He played football, basketball, and baseball. You know, it was all state or never all three of them. <laughs> Nowadays, it's kind of tough to do. And then, and then Gary Allen, who you and I have known for many years, he's become our friends. What kind of player was Gary? Oh, he's just like all the rest. He's just good. You know, he has good attitude. You know, good size, good speed, and that's what all these kids did. They have good attitude. They love to play. That's why they played all three sports sometimes. These kids I grew up with, I, I watched them all play. Uh, I grew up, Henry DeFoya, he's going to be here tonight. And, of course, Jimmy Papan, who I, I idolize, of course, Gary Allen. But I'll, I will tell you this, Coach. We've got a great lineup of athletes. And wait until 1970s where you coach the first state championship team. Uh, that's going to be even we got some great athletes next year. Well, you know, Sandy has had great, really great athletes every year. I mean, it's just make a selection to narrow it down to you know two three or four or five is was a tough situation we met many times and you know as we go on you know uh with the criteria we, the way we have it you know it's going to be some more tough decisions because you know some well, good I, athletes are going to be missed out just because one or two points of or something like this. And I know I drove you crazy on a couple oh, games, okay. but 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 did I wasn't I a guy that gave everything I had on the field? Everything you had, I never ever worried about that. You always hustled. You did, you know, you just did some goofy things every now and then. But <laughs> you know, it wasn't because you weren't trying or hustling. You just got went brain dead or something for a couple of times. Well, you know, there's plays I just went nuts out there on the field. But but I'm so honored to be able to work with ProView to put this thing on and make this a, memori a memorable event. Well, you bet. That's an awful thank you to, to ProView. Uh, 
you know, I got people that are going to watch it tonight and uh, are all excited about that. And, you know, to have something like this in Albuquerque in the state of New Mexico with ProView Sports, you know, is my son's in, Cal in uh, Colorado. You know, he doesn't, they don't have this up there, you know, and it's really neat for the kids to, and, you know, and the coaches to be seen on television and have other people watch them. And coach, I will tell you, you're my inspiration. You, you coached me, but I, I went on and played rugby, but you got me into the mental state of what it takes to be a winner. Well, you know, that's, you just try your best, Marty. With you, it was pretty easy because you were always ready to go. You know, so, uh, you know, to get you to go out and give it your best and, and be a winner was not difficult. So, you know, people, some people are harder than others, and you just kind of you got to do what you do and support them as best you can and, and work them hard and uh, let the chips fall where they fall. Well, Coach, thanks for being part of this event. It's going to be a great event, and we're going to do more of these in the, in the future. So next year, it's going to be special, too, for the 70s. Yeah, I hope so. All right. So thanks a lot, Coach. You bet, Marty. Thank you, and thank ProView. I've got Gary Allen, and he's going in with the class of 1968, and he was – he was one of my heroes when I was in grade school and junior high. And Gary, t tell me what you think about being in this Hall of Fame. Well, you know, Marty, it's a real honor. Out of all the athletes that have come through Sandia in the last decade, just to be honored to be one of them, it's, uh, it's a blessing. And um, I know there's lots of other athletes that should be in here. So to be involved in this and to be uh, accorded the uh, honor of being in the Hall of Fame, it's quite an honor. I'm very appreciative. Well, you deserve it, Gary. But, yeah, there are some guys like Joe Duffy and some other players that came close. Hugh McKay probably should be in, but they'll probably come back next time we come around. We'll be doing the 60s this year, 70s, 80s, and 90s. But, guy, we had so many great athletes in the 60s. And when we sat down to put that list together, I just couldn't believe what these guys did. Absolutely. Um, I, I feel That's why I feel real honored. Um, you know, to be able to uh, be one of the select few to be inducted this time, it's quite an honor. And um, I appreciate all my teammates. I appreciate everybody I played with. I appreciate the opportunities. And kudos to Coach Charlton oh, he, yeah. and Coach Torgerson. They both deserve it very well as I do. So which was your best sport? You're good at everything. What was your favorite sport? Um, Yes, to all the above. Football, basketball, and baseball. But to, uh, to be quite honest, I love football more than any of them. And you played on the first state basketball t baseball team that won the title in 68. Yes, it was a state, uh, state title. Um, very honored to do that. It came down to the very last game against Las Cruces. And um, here we are, 50 years later. It's incredible. Well, I want to congratulate you coming into the Hall of Fame, and I'm so happy that we're going to do a documentary of this thing so you can send to your friends. But this is a great honor. This school is very special to both of us. We produce so many great people, and you're one of them, Gary. Well, I appreciate that, Marty, and you're very special for putting this whole thing together. Um, it's 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 matadors to the max. So, That's right. Ashi Baba. Ashababa Ole. That's right. All right. Thanks a lot, Gary. Hey, Marty. I've got Mike Buck, who literally was my hero. When he was the star of Sandia, I was in the ninth grade thinking about being the next Mike Buck, but I was too small. But it's an honor tonight to have one of the greatest football players. Of course, you played, uh, you played basketball, didn't you? Or, I, I didn't play basketball. It was football and track. Right. But you were definitely one of the great uh, players of all time. So tell us about your, your, your days at Sandia. Uh, three of the most amazing, wonderful years of my life. Uh, I came here as a kind of a shy, timid kid. And through my activity in sports, uh, I was able to gain a lot of self-confidence and blossomed and uh, left here a completely different person. It was life changing for me. You went on and played for the Lobos for Rudy Feldman, right? And starting defensive end. And after your football career in college, what what did you? What was your path after that? Well, I immediately went to work for the old uh, uh, Dale Bellama company. Uh, Dale Bellama was a former uh, land developer, home builder here in uh, Albuquerque, and was lucky enough to go to work uh, for that company and built a career uh, in real estate. And uh, uh, was with Bellama for 18 years and then went out on my own and have owned my own real estate company uh, up in Denver and uh, I'm still actively involved uh, 
doing deals. So how long have you been up in Denver now? We moved there in 1986. So raised two kids there, uh, and uh, it's home. We love it. Back in the days when they didn't count sacks, this guy had a lot of sacks in high school. No, nobody, could, nobody could stop you in a high school football game. Well, thank you for the compliment. I'm sure I was stopped occasionally, but I, 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 uh, I appreciate that compliment. But I, I want to tell you, for the first annual, you, you're very deserving. This is going to be a great night tonight. We've got the basketball game against El Dorado, our arch rivals. Back then, we didn't have El Dorado. If we beat Highland Manzano, we were happy, right? Yeah, right, totally, totally, totally. Uh-huh. But I just want to say congratulations, and I can't wait to see you get that plaque tonight. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's quite an honor, and uh, I will try to uh, savor the moment. I've got Jerry Spurlock, another one of my heroes, who I think played in the greatest game Sandy ever had in the 60s against Highland High School, and you made the winning, I guess the winning touchdown, but you were All-State as a wide receiver, you, you were basketball, baseball, you were, you were everything. Well, I, I, uh, I grew up doing that, so I just kept continuing it in high school. When you, had, when you heard the name Steer, Jerry Spurlock, he was like, when I was a kid, he was the best there was. Well, I had a great quarterback so in football, and I had a lot of great teammates. There were a lot of good players to come out of Albuquerque in 1968 through those years, from, not just from Sandia, but a lot of other schools, too. And Mike Kenyon, who's not, in the, he's not going in the night, but he was one great quarterback that one year. He's the best quarterback I've ever seen. He could throw the ball 70 yards. And I remember. And, and, and tell us quickly, the, the audience, the greatest game, I think Highland had a 48-game winning streak coming in. The place was packed at Wilson Stadium, sold out. You couldn't get in. And tell us about how great a game that was. Oh, my gosh. It's a memory that I'll never forget. Uh, of course, though, all of those guys were my idols all through school, the Jones brothers, Mike Temple. And uh, we were down 7-3 to three in the fourth quarter, and Mike threw me a real long pass. I was lucky to catch it. I lateraled to Gar Glonner. And then three plays later, we scored. And by the way, Glock Goners passed away, but but that was a great play. And I was up in the stands. I went to Monroe Junior High School, and I was I idolized you, Jerry. Well, thank you. <laughs> you don't have to do that. But we idolized the guys from Highland, so that was a big win for us, for our all of our careers. And you played on the great 1968 baseball team and won the state title. Yes, we did. We beat Las Cruces one to nothing, and I played again with a lot of great athletes in that too. And you were on that great 67 basketball team that won the state title? Yes, I was. It was. That was another great time. You know, we had two state championships while I was at Sandia. I always say the 67 team was maybe the greatest football team that never got to the finals. And the week they played in the semifinals, everybody got the flu. Exactly. Both our linebackers had the, the flu. Mickey Cristelli and Kim Purdue. Uh, Mike Kenyon was playing with a concussion. Uh, you know, we were we were pretty banged up, but Albuquerque High was a good team. Of course, we played against the great Robert Lee Williams. And he's here tonight. Robert Lee Williams is coming here tonight, so it's going to be a, probably the greatest running back in the 60s. Absolutely. He was, he was my hero. So thanks for coming, and it's going to be a great night, and, and we're going to have, you can get a video of this event, but it's an honor to, to see you tonight, Jerry. Great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I've got Judge Stan Whitaker, class of 73, right? 75. And actually, Judge grew up in my neighborhood. We've known each other since, I guess, 50 years ago, since we were kids. And he is probably the greatest quarter mile ever come out of Sandy. He broke the state high school record that was owned by Artie Garden Swartz, went on for Kansas and became a great trick star at Kansas. And now he, he went to law school at UNM. Yeah, I did. Yep. UNM. Yep. And now he's a judge. How long have you been a judge now? Man, uh, just over 13 years. How about that? Yeah. And during the ceremony, I was talking about all the great people Sandy has produced, two governors, judge, CEOs. I mean, this school's really produced the stars. They really have. This is, this. I mean, Sandia High School is a great school with a great, great legacy. You know, even in my class, um, I mean, we, we had uh, we had just tremendously successful people. Uh, um, 
that, that have gone on to do great things, not just locally, but nationally. And yeah, Sandy is a, is a great, great school. And you were around when Mike Carter was playing. And, and back in those days, the African-American community in Albuquerque was really small. But Albuquerque, Sandy High School has produced some of the greatest African-American athletes, scholars. Matter of fact, I think we have 20 African-American merit scholars. The school's really done a great job. I mean, it's unbelievable what we've done. It, it is. It is. I mean, you think of, of the Carter family with Nora, uh, George, who was just a phenomenal athlete, and then Michael, who was uh, the youngest. They were just tremendous athletes, and not just great athletes, but they were just gr great human beings and just a gr great family and uh, just great legacy for the school. And, and, and that's what this school's all about, is producing excellence. And, and, and I'm so proud, the guy I grew up with in Inez Elementary School went on to become a judge. <laughs> of course, uh, the, other, the other judge was the kid from, um, I'm trying, you know, uh, uh, you know what I'm talking about. The guy was in the first, second grade with us. Oh, with the, Neil Candelaria. Yeah, and then, yeah. And, and then, and of course we had, uh, we had the, uh, that first African American metropolitan judge from Manzano High School. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, no, Keisha, Sh Keisha Shanti, I think is. Yeah. yeah. So we've produced some great people all in the Northeast Heights, and and Albuquerque has been good to you. And didn't you meet your wife here? I did. I did. My my high school sweetheart. We were juniors, 1974. Been married for 40 years. How about that? And we talked about the night Hutch Hutchinson met his wife Pam. He passed away, but she donated. So what a great romance at Sandia. Yeah, absolutely. I, I owe a lot to. Sandia High School, no doubt about it. Oh, great. <laughs> it's great to see you here tonight. Thank you for coming. Well, thank you, Marty. Thank you for doing this. This is great, and it's going to be wonderful this, for the school. I've got Gary Russian, who was my hero when I was a boy growing up. Undoubtedly, you're the greatest wrestler I ever saw, plus football player. And I'm so happy that you're in this Hall of Fame because you're very deserving. Plus, you went on and had a great career academically as a PhD. You were in the National Wrestling Championship right in your weight class at Arizona. So tell me what, is, what your thoughts of being in the Sandy Hall of Fame. Well, this is a great honor for me. I had no idea that this would happen to me, and it's, uh, it's really a for me. Well, you were like, the, you were the, the national runner-up as a wrestler at Arizona? I was third in the nationals, in the nationals. yeah, at Arizona. And did you ever lose a wrestling match at Sandia? Yes, I did. I don't remember who I lost to, but I did lose some. And you were, what position did you play in football? I played guard and linebacker in football at Sandia. Yeah, I saw you play many times at Wilson Stadium. Uh, and I, I go back, what year did you graduate? 60? I graduated in 65. 65. And I saw you play against, uh, I think it was Valley High School. Uh, back then, didn't uh, Wilson open up in 62, right? I believe so, right. Mm -hmm. So what's your, uh, your memories, your fondest memories at San Diego? Uh, in sports? Yeah. Well, I, I think playing football for Coach Charlton was one of my fondest memories. And then also, of course, wrestling was a big, big thing for me too. And uh, it's hard to, it's hard to think about one specific moment. But I think winning the state championship my senior year in wrestling was one of the biggest. And I think I was there to see you get it at Johnson Gym. Oh, that gr great. So, Gary, thanks for coming. We're going to do this documentary. We'll, we'll be able to get you a copy, but thanks for being part of this whole event. Sure. I really appreciate the honor to, to be invited here and to have this, this time to spend with the other athletes. Okay. Thank you very much, Gary. I've got another one of my boyhood idols that I actually watched him play at Sandia. He went on... He was the quarterback for the Matadors, for Charlton, and then he went on and had a distinguished coaching career at El Dorado, Del Norte, am I missing another school? No, that's and, and, I, I, and he was on the selection committee, and believe it or not, I don't think we've been able to get these guys if we didn't have you on the committee. Well, it was really a great honor for me and a lot of fun just to have the opportunity to get together with people uh, associated with Sandia High School and to uh, rekindle some memories, tell some stories, and nominate some outstanding athletes. We had some people who came close, like Joe Duffy, Hugh McKay, uh, Bodoin. We had some players that were close, but I, I do believe we got it right. Well, you know, the, the uh, goal of the committee was to pick the 10 
one outstanding over that era from 1958 to 1969. And of course, there's a lot of quality athletes. And uh, fortunately, we didn't have to deal with selecting women because they were not participating at the athletic level in those days. So just picking these male athletes uh, was really a difficult challenge. But no question, we picked the cream of the crop. I think we got it right. We had some close ones, but I think we've got the right people. We had so many. What I, what I didn't realize, how many great athletes we had in the 60s. Well, really, uh, you know, and it just goes back. Our first uh, uh, selection uh, uh, in, in, in terms of uh, the era was Orvi Hampton. And that just is the kind of person from that year on, from the early 60s, 61, uh, up to 69, it's every year there were just outstanding uh, contributors to the athletic program and people that were successful and achievers and a very difficult challenge, but very rewarding. Well, I, I appreciate your knowledge. Coach, you're, you're still the best commentator for, uh, for radio, for football, and you're, you're fantastic. I love listening to you on the radio, and I think you're a gem in this. And I hope you continue doing the radio broadcast until you can't do it anymore. Well, I appreciate that. I always enjoy it. It gives me a great opportunity to see good kids and still talk to the coaches, and, and uh, I really appreciate the players and their commitment. You're one of the great matadors of all time, in my opinion. Well, uh, I don't know. Coach Charlton, he might I'd tell a different story. I think he was pretty glad when I graduated. He made sure that the W's went through the went through the ceremony. Well, thank you for coming on with us. Absolutely, thank you. Go Matadors. I've got my football coach that that I play for is is Coach Clem Charlton, who's going into the Hall of Fame tonight. Of course, he coached golf, he coached wrestling, state champ. He's done everything. And I actually played in the last game you ever was a head coach against West Mesa and Melanie, and we won that game, your last game. And I'm so happy you're going into the Hall of Fame. And tell tell me what you think about coming into the state. Well, that's great. It's, it's an honor, and I'm real happy about it. You know, Jim Oppen and I went into the University Hall of Fame two weeks ago. In the athletic department. So it's been, a, it's, the last three weeks has been pretty turmoil. It's busy, 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 but it's been fun and it's a great honor. And of all the great football teams we had, you had the 67 team, of course the 68 team that lost our teams in the state final. Which was the best football team you ever coached? Well, I think the 57, you know, our best two players got hurt the night before the game with Albuquerque High in the semifinals. We lost Purdue. He got hit by a car and going through the parking lot on his bicycle. Had 186 stitches taken in his leg. And we had a bunch of guys with uh, with the flu. Well, yeah, but uh, that, those two we missed the most. Both our both of them were linebackers, and that was our defense. But we we had a good good. It was the first game we lost that year. It was an honor for me to play for you. I must have drove you nuts sometimes on the field, but at least I gave everything I had for you, Coach. You, you were fine. The trouble is, you did a lot of things that we didn't want you to do. <laughs> you asked me to do a lot, but, but I will say this, Coach. You coached the 1960 Wrestling State Championship team. Yes, we had that. that we, I coached wrestling here for about 10 years and then turned it over to Rossetti and, and uh, Altman. But. And, and coach, I would say uh, in the early early sixties we struggled, and then when the school started getting bigger, you started getting all these good athletes. Well, you know, the first year we was here, they said we would have fourteen hundred students. We had eighteen hundred, and we didn't have room for them. Then the next year they bring they bring we went on a split schedule, and the year after that they bring Manzano in here, and they go to school in the afternoon, and we're here in the mornings. We, the first three years was really screwed up. We couldn't get any going because we had to share our facilities with everybody. I know one thing. I idolized you as a kid growing up, and I'm proud that I played for you. I mean, I, I, at least I got to go to uh, suit up in the 68 title game. I didn't get in the game, Harley, but I do remember that game like it was yesterday. Well, I do, too. <laughs> I live those things, and I think about them all the time. And, you know, we had... We had some good, good years, and we had some poor ones. But we were split four times in 12 years here at San Diego, completely. And, you know, Steve Lloyd tonight's given out a $1,500 scholarship. You coach Steve in golf and football. Tell us about Steve. Well, Steve was a great kid. You know, his handicap was, was due to a mountain accident, you know. But he's done well in the world, hasn't he? He's yeah, one of the greatest good... Greatest guys in the business in golf, professional golf. 
He's a great one. He was one of your players, and he was our captain. <laughs> Phil Mickelson's one of his aces, and he when he coached at Texas or uh, Arizona State, he coached at Arkansas before, you know, and then. He, was a, he coached at Phoenix Junior College and got the job in Arkansas. Won the Southwest Conference, beat Texas for the first time ever. Then they brought him back to Arizona State, and he, he had a fabulous year there. So you've coached some great – you couldn't – it would be unfair for all the guys to say who was the best, but you had so many great ones. Oh, yeah, there, there, it's hard to I, – I wouldn't even want to uh, attempt it. I, I, it's, it's amazing, uh, all the young guys that we had – and they did well in college, and we even a couple did pro ball, you know. So, and we've got Gary Johnson here tonight, the ex-governor, who just did a 2,800-mile bike race. Talking about an athlete that just can and climb Mount Everest. Yeah, I know he he's he's fantastic on a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> But he was a good track star. Yeah, he was a great pole vaulter. And, and, and we've had so many great people that come through the school. It's amazing. It sure has. And you know what? It's, it's about time they recognized him. I'm a, this has been, you know, we opened this school in 1958. So you are 94? Yeah, yeah I'm 94. Yeah. This is incredible, and this is my, I'm going to put a hug behind it. This is the guy that inspired me as a coach, and I was so happy to play in the last game you ever coached at San Diego. Well, I'm glad God you bless were there. You, yeah, it's been great having you. God bless you. Yeah, thank you, same to you, and I really appreciate it, because, you know, this is a great thing. I, I really get choked up on these things, but uh, I'm, I'm glad Sandy is doing this. A lot of kids deserve this recognition. Brewing Company, conveniently located on Albuquerque's west side, just south of I-40. You can come on in, enjoy our pizza, pasta, burgers, and more by Matucci's. It's all at Lava Rock. Lava Rock Brewing Company, come on in. DreamStyle Remodeling has been wowing homeowners in New Mexico since 1989. Selected as Best Custom Home Remodeler for three consecutive years by readers of the Albuquerque Journal, we're also your exclusive provider for top home improvement brands like Renewal by Anderson, Four Seasons, Blaze King, and many others. Founded and headquartered in Albuquerque, DreamStyle Remodeling is family-owned and now employs more than 500 people across the southwestern U.S. In fact, we've helped more than 60,000 and homeowners improve their home in New Mexico, Arizona, California, Idaho, and West Texas. We're committed to providing a superior customer experience. We've earned 4.6 stars with hundreds of online reviews and have an A-plus with the BBB. DreamStyle Remodeling is a proud supporter of UNM Athletics. Visit our beautiful 10,000 square foot showroom at 1460 Renaissance Boulevard across from Sam's Club or DreamStyleRemodeling.com to make your home remodeling dreams come true. My name is Brian Williams, I'm the Athletic Director at Sandia, and welcome to Sandia High School for our Sandia Athletic Hall of Fame. What a special night this is. Three years ago when I came aboard as AD, I said to myself, this school has been around quite a while, and why do we not have a Sandia Athletic Hall of Fame? Fast forward, three years, two and a half years, and eight months later, since March, I said, all right, Sky Holly, how do we get this started? I also talked to Pete McFarland, AD, former AD at Sandia Prep, Larry Waters, former AD at, uh, at La Cueva, Leanne Moores, current AD, and just, how, how do you do the process? What happened? Well, long story short, we got the process started, and this summer, this long summer, right, committee members? Where are my committee members? Raise your hand. 
Can we give a round of applause for Samantha? Lots of bantering back and forth, very positive bantering back and forth, very good conversations about the history of Sandia and its athletics, and we got it started. So here we are, and we are here tonight to induct eight student athletes and two coaches into the Sandia Athletic Hall of Fame. Very, very proud of that. And here's Scott. Hi, my name is Sky Holly, and I've had the honor of being part of this committee, both of the last year. The Athletic Hall of Fame is going to recognize athletes and coaches that have become part of the history of Sandia High School. This recognition is not only for those individuals, but it's to, um, for our entire Sandia community to cherish these memories and the exceptional um, athletic um, accolades that these um, students, athletes, and coaches have contributed to our school. It is our goal that your achievements as the inductees will inspire our future athletes at Sandia to continue to strive for excellence. At this time, we will now have a few people who would like to say a few words, starting with Marty Watts and Gary Allen. I want to thank Brian for, for putting me on the committee because these guys are being inducted. And I noticed there's my, one of my buddies here, Mike Moore, I grew up with as a kid. These are the guys that we idolize. When I was at Ideas Elementary School and when we were junior high school, and, and these were the guys that were stars, and 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 they and this group of people coming in, they are fantastic. And so tonight, I want to I want to acknowledge the people that donated money that made this thing work tonight. And I'm gonna go through the, the people that helped us. I've got Shelly Bird and his son Todd. Why don't you stand up? Okay, all right. Ted Mady, he's at some event in Dallas giving a special award, so he couldn't make it. Carl Rutledge is out hunting elk tonight, but he couldn't make it. Mark Thompson runs a oil company out of Houston, he donated. And then we have Marty Sice, he's here tonight. Stand up, Marty. And then a guy that grew up in my neighborhood, and he's a special guy, and he became a judge one of the greatest quarter models ever in the history of Sandia, Judge Stan Whitaker. Let's stand up, Stan. <laughs> Mike Wimber could be here tonight, but he, he played baseball for the Sandia team, and he was a guy we grew up with. And I will tell you this, uh, I think he's been a farmer insurance agent for like 41 years, Sandia graduate, class 71. And then Joe Azar, who's at some conference in Dallas. He couldn't make it here, but he helped. And he was a great, one well, of Coach Oppen's great football players. He helped us out. And then our starting fullback when I was in high school, Ron Bohannon, who now has a very successful company called Tierra West. He couldn't be here tonight. And then is Jeff Modini, is he here tonight? Jeff. There he is. He played, he played in 1968, right? On the, on the 67 team. In 68, okay. So he, he he owns all the Lazy Boys. Make sure you buy some recliners from it, okay? They work. And then the guy who donated the food here tonight, Vic ben Pendeze, am I pronouncing it right? Vic? Nice, nice. Class of 1983. Vic Okay. 81, okay. And then uh, Steve Lloyd, who's donating a $1,500 scholarship for the next 10 years with Gary Allen, uh, and that's gonna be given out at the spring banquet, right? $1,500, of course, he was a captain of the 1970 team, great golfer, he's now famous, and runs probably the greatest professional agency for golf. Phil Mickelson is his number one, number one guy. And then Steve King, who was Coach Ottman's first quarterback in what, 74, right? Yeah. Yeah. He, he donated. 73. Uh, 73. 73. He's, he's the chairman of the board for, for Moss Adams, and he's here. He couldn't make it here tonight. But these guys, let's just give them a big uh, applause. These are the guys that made this thing work tonight. 
And I forgot, Reedy Clark couldn't be here tonight because he had his operation today, shoulder operation, but playing too much football for Coach Charlton. And then, this is a great story. There's a lady named Pam Hutchison. She was, she was high school sweetheart with a guy named Hutch Hutchison, who was the captain of the 1971 team. And they got married after high school, and he went on to become head of the Chicago Board of Trade. He passed away two years ago of cancer, but I got to know him when I lived in Chicago, when I run the Lobo Club in Illinois. But he was a great football player, and he and she donated tonight from Illinois. Now, the last thing I'm going to say is the stars are twinkling, shining on the Sandy Mazgos tonight at quarter till eight when they come out on the half court. So this is a very special group because we've put dues two governors, one in Arizona, one in New Mexico, and Gary Johnson's here tonight. Why don't you stand up, Gary? And we produce so many CEOs, so many presidents. It's unbelievable. Actors, actresses. This is probably the most special high school in America. As a matter of fact, what I was told, we have more national uh, merit scholars than That's anybody in the country. In New Mexico. So we're pretty special. And then the last I'm going to say is, there's been a lot of people, a lot of people have passed away. We've had a lot of Sandia that died, and we want to do a moment of silence, especially we just lost Joe Duffy a couple of weeks ago. So we like to do a, a moment of silence for the ones who've gone to the Manador Heaven. All right, we're ready to go. And I'm turning over the... yesterday and we've, up, we've upped it from $1,500 to $2,000 and so for each male athlete and each female athlete but for each graduating year from here on uh, we'll each get $1,000. Joe Duffy was my idol. Joe Duffy was who I looked up to. Joe was not only an incredible athlete, but he was an incredible teacher. And he took lots of young kids under his wing, me being one of them. And so it uh, kind of hit me hard here several weeks ago when Joe passed away. So honor to everybody that's passed away in the last decade. We don't know all of them, but they're all in Matador heaven. So, onward and upward. Thank you. Next up, former Governor Gary Johnson. I'm not sure how I got to be the person delivering the uh, keynote speech this evening. Yes, I do. It's Marty Watts. <laughs> <laughs> and and if, if there is a definition of someone with heart, it's Marty. And. I know that you probably all know that. And we're here tonight to pay homage to a lot of really terrific athletes, athletes that I didn't know, that I have come to know, uh, but looked up to, um, every single one of them. And that goes for the coaches, too, that molded um, all of us. Um, they made a difference in our lives. Um, I, I describe myself today as a competitive athlete at 66 years old. Now, that's a real oxymoron in and of itself, but um, that's who I am and what I've done. And I think that fitness is an incredible part of life. Being an athlete is an incredible uh, part of life. 
Um, it's, it's a stopwatch. It's a win-loss record. You can't, you can't dispute it. Um, and a lot of hard work goes into that, um, but it's worth every bit of it. Uh, I did this self-analysis uh, in 1987. What were the best times in my life to that point? What were the worst times in my life to that point? And I, I don't mean days, but I mean months or whatever. But I came to the realization that being fit uh, always played a role in the best times in my life. And I, through that analysis, um, alcohol wasn't a good thing in my life. So in 1987, I quit drinking. And not that I wasn't fit in 1987, but I made a pact to myself that I was going to be as fit as I could possibly be every single day of my life for the rest of my life. Um, I am a professional, I'm a ski bum. I skied 135 days last year, and I hope this year uh, ends up to be the same. There's an event in Taos every year called Bridgethon. How many, how many runs can you hike and ski in two days? You know, the, the kids come out to compete in that, and this last year, I guess it was those that didn't show up, but I was actually the overall winner this last year in the Bridgethon in Taos. Overall, not age group, but overall, something that I'm really proud of and uh, have been proud of. It's, it's part of my life. I've had the good fortune to climb the highest mountain uh, on each of the seven continents, uh, the seven summits. Uh, people ask me, you know, gosh, how did you, get, how did you get fit for such a thing like that? Well, you know, being fit for life, you can do that every single day of your life if that's what you choose to do. And then for me personally, the, the best event that I've really changed my life uh, has been the Continental Divide mountain bike race, which I've done for three years in a row now. And that's a 2,800 mile race uh, from Banff, Canada to Antelope Wells, New Mexico on the Continental Divide, and you have to be self-supported to do that. And it is a race. And every year, more than half the field um, drops out. But what I've taken away from that is just to be grateful for the simplest of things that we should be grateful for sitting in the hot tub or being able to watch TV or, or whatever it is that you get pleasure from. I've discovered that uh, for me, athletics plays the role of me being able to be in the moment. I always tell people, find out your passion in life and get as much of it as you possibly can. If, that, if that's golf, if that's playing chess, if that's reading, if that's music, if that's writing, whatever it is, find your passion and pursue your passion. And that's where we are here this evening, again, paying tribute uh, to a lot of people that really contributed to a passion I think that we all have, all binds us all, which is athletics. And a deep, a sense of gratitude to all of you. Uh, Gary Allen, I didn't know Gary in, uh, I mean, these guys graduated ahead of me, Mike Buck and Jerry Spurlock, uh, but I heard about him, I heard about him, I heard that they made a difference, and then having come to know Gary fairly well over the years, a um, gracious individual in every aspect of his life, and um, thank you guys, thank each and every one of you. And as we move forward, I guess the 70s will probably be kind of the same phenomenon, but then in the 80s we'll have women as half of this whole thing, which is the way that it should be also. Uh, but um, thank you. Thank you, Marty, for allowing me to, to come here this evening and just say a few words, because, I don't know, it, you know, when you're able to reflect on what it is that's made your life what it is, uh, athletics is that for me, and... People in this room have made that possible. Coach Ottman, man, you're still a British house. I can't believe it. <laughs> anyway, thank you all very much. Next up, our fearless leader, Larry Dianza, our Sandy High School principal. Good evening. Uh, this is a special occasion for a lot of reasons. Uh, I know many of you in the room, I go back uh, almost as far. I came to Albuquerque in 75, so 
Uh, I've known Jimmy Ottman since 75, Clem Charlton, and I remember him back in the days when I was coaching some golf, and he was the Sandia coach back in the day. But one of the things that uh, we talk a lot about here at Sandia High School is, is going from good to great. Uh, when you guys were here in the 60s, you were the school, right? You guys were the school. It was Sandia and Highland and Albuquerque High, and, and, and you guys were setting the mark. In, uh, in recent years, uh, you know, El Dorado became the big dogs, and then La Cueva became the big dogs, and for some reason they still are the big dogs. But uh, you know what? We talk a lot about going from good to great here, and we have a lot of outstanding people and coaches here, and I want to thank the committee specifically because this is part of our good to great momentum of doing events that are bringing the community back to Sandia High School. You guys were the setters of the plate for Sandia High School back in the day. And I want to thank Brian and all the members of his committee for uh, getting this going. A uh, number of folks, I've known David Williams for years. He and I crossed paths through our career at Del Norte and, and, and El Dorado many years together as he was coaching football and I was coaching business. But uh, you know, we were doing great things and you know, it's so outstanding to see many of you in this room. Uh, and we appreciate all the things that you all did for the school and we hope you continue to come back uh, and be a part of the Sandia High School community. Thank you so much and congratulations. Looking forward to handing out awards. For the Alba Park Committee, we will officially induct them. When your name is called, please come up to the front to be recognized. If you are representing the inductee, please come up as well. State Farm knows that for every one of those what? moments, this is ridiculous. There's one of these. Is this my car? What? This is ridiculous. This can't be happening. This can't be happening. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. Oh, it's happening, sweetheart. Shut up. Shut up. Ah! That's why State Farm is there with car insurance for when things go wrong, but also here with car loans to help life go right. State Farm. Talk to State Farm agent Marty Size or Michelle Rudolph in Albuquerque today. Lava Rock Brewing Company, conveniently located on Albuquerque's west side, just south of I-40. You can come on in, enjoy our pizza, pasta, burgers, and more by Matucci's. It's all at Lava Rock. Lava Rock Brewing Company, come on in. After we do this portion of the presentation, then we'll sit back down and we'll talk about each individual. First up, Mo Barreras. See Team Jamie first. Take a picture. Um, he couldn't be with us tonight, but Orby Hampton. Jim Papa. Gary Rushing. Jerry Spurlock.
Gary Allen. He couldn't be here with us tonight, but Dr. Eric Christensen. Mike Buck. He couldn't be with us this evening, but Coach Don Torgerson. And last but not least, our first AD and football coach, Clem Charlton. <laughs> We're not timing you, coach. <laughs> That's your job. <laughs> Please help me welcome the class of 2019 Sandia Athletic College. Thank you. out to um, I had to kind of do some research to track him down found out that he um, graduated from San Diego went to UNM I was able to find him from UNM it's the uh, University of Kentucky where he still teaches currently so I had to do a little bit of investigation but he did send um, something that I'm going to read on his behalf tonight um, Eric Christensen he graduated from San Diego High School in 1964 his most memorable athletic experience at San Diego are um, the state track and field meet championships and state records in javelin and high jump his senior year. A full scholarship took him to UNM for the first two years of college where he majored in historical studies. A leg operation his first semester prevented him from continuing high jumping for years, so he concentrated on the javelin. He transferred to the University of South California and, and be, the beginning of his junior year and received an academic athletic scholarship his senior year where he's a member of the NCAA championship for track and field and graduated in 1968. Sorry. <laughs> his, um, he went and got his master's degree at USC in 1970 and began his doctoral studies. With USC graduate Dean's fellowship, he went to the university and earned his medical doctorate where he completed competed as, on athletic teams in the javelin and high jump as well. A year before completing his doctorate in 1976, he re received an appointment in the Department of History at the University of Kentucky and has since served 13 years as Director of Graduate Studies. Adding to the joys of his academic life have been his son Scott in California, his daughter in Kentucky himself, in Kentucky and his grandchildren Shelby. He is very thankful to have had this honor and is grateful to everybody on the committee to be able to be inducted into the 2019 Athletic Hall of Fame. Next up, Gary and Alan. Can you come yourself? Beware, Jerry Spurlock. Um, one of the things that happens when you're a matador and you're growing up uh, an athlete in this town, um, it all goes back to your family. We're all born into one family, and it's the most important ingredient to how I grew up being an athlete. Uh, my dad taught me how to throw the football. He taught me how to shoot free throws. He taught me how to hit a baseball. Um, he taught me almost everything. And my, my sister and my brother are back there and they have a picture of my mom and dad because 
my mom and dad aren't here anymore, and they would be so proud for this evening. And I want to honor them before I do anything else. Um, I grew up very early on um, and grateful for the talents that I had. Um, but being born into a family is only one family we experience as we grow older. Um, families grow outside of our family. Uh, the Matador family was obviously very important to me. It was, a, it was an a, exciting time. It was one of the best times of my life. I made so many friends who I still have those friends. They're still part of the Matador family. They're still part of my family now. Um, as we all grow older, our family grows also. And I, I'm really appreciative of everybody that showed up tonight. Um, it's kudos to how that family uh, enters our life and stays in our life. And I really appreciate that. Um, athletically wise, um, everybody knows why we're here. We've all been athletes. We've all performed. But it transcends the athleticism, the friendships, the relationships. Um, everything transcends athletics. Um, and so tonight, I just want to thank everybody that not only knew me athletically, but knows me as a good friend, knows me as a loyal person, um, knows me as sometimes bantering too much. Um, and I just have one question for Jerry Spurlock. In junior high, who won the scoring in junior high, at Cleveland Junior High? You were a 9.3 average, I was an <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> Gary Rushing. <laughs> Gary told me to say that. <laughs> To our family, Gary's brothers are here, and I know his parents are looking down from heaven and are very proud of him, and they supported him in his um, athletics throughout high school and, and have supported him throughout his entire life, and we're just so very thankful to all of you who are here and a part of this. Um, so now, on with that, um, during Gary's time at Sandia, he was heavily involved with athletics. He was a delegate to the Boys State and president of the Letterman's Club his senior, senior year. As for athletics, he was first team all city and all state in football, all city in baseball, and state champion in wrestling. After graduating from Sandia in 1965, Gary was awarded a wrestling scholarship to attend the University of Arizona. While there, he majored in physical education and minored in biology. During his wrestling career at Arizona, he won the Western Athletic Conference Championship in 1967 and 1969, and he was runner-up in 1968. He was selected Western Athletic Conference Outstanding Wrestler in 1969 and became an All-American, finishing third in the NCAA Championship. Additionally, he participated as a member of the West Squad in the 1969 East-West Classic All-Star Meet, which included America's finest wrestlers, collegians, and non-collegians, and defeated his opponent from the East team. After graduating from the University of Arizona, Gary started his coaching career at Las Lunas High School in Las Lunas, New Mexico. He taught biology and physical education, in addition to coaching football and wrestling. After three years, he returned to the University of Arizona to pursue a master's degree and assist with the wrestling team. Upon completion of his master's, he began coaching wrestling and football at Canyon Del Oro High School in Tucson. After several years of coaching at the high school level, Gary became graduate assistant wrestling coach at the University of Northern Colorado while he completed work on a doctoral degree. 
Upon completing his doctorate, he was hired as the head wrestling coach and assistant football coach at Valley City State University in North Dakota. After four years at Valley City State, Gary accepted the head wrestling coach position at Minnesota State University. In 1993, he was voted Wrestling Coach of the Year in the North Central Conference. Gary retired from coaching in 1994 to become a full-time professor at the university. He was instrumental in the development of the sport management program and its accreditation. He has also had several articles published in the sport management journals. <coughs> Gary has served in a, as an expert witness in sport-related legal cases. He retired from teaching in 2014 as a full professor. And Gary currently resides in Minnesota. He enjoys fishing, physical activities, and other benefits that accompany retirement. Um, some of his most memorable experiences are receiving his doctoral degree in education from the University of Northern Colorado in 1984, his induction into the University of Arizona Hall of Fame, and his induction into the Sandia High School Hall of Fame. Um, and so we thank you for inducting him into the Hall of Fame as it is an honor for our whole family. James Furlong. I'm not very good at contemporary, uh, contemporary, did he write that? Contemporary speaking, so I've got notes, especially about Jerry, I want to make sure I cover everything he wanted me to cover. Uh, <laughs> First of all, uh, let me say that I'm honored to introduce Jerry, my fellow teammate and dear friend. All of us who had the privilege of playing football, basketball, or baseball with Jerry realize what an exceptionally gifted athlete he was. Now, you asked me to put that in. <laughs> he stood out immediately and became my role model on the football team. I wanted to be like him. He was so self-confident, some say cocky, I wasn't. He was an instant leader, I wasn't. If our quarterback threw a ball anywhere near him, he'd catch it. And anyone trying to defend him knew it was just a matter of time before Jerry would score a touchdown. He dominated anyone he was up against, although Robert Lee Williams is Robert with us tonight? I don't see Robert. From Albuquerque High School would have a differing opinion of that, but uh, Jerry was amazing. So for my three years at Sandia, uh, my goal was to follow Jerry's example. Even though we never competed for the same position, we played a lot of tennis throughout each summer, uh, getting ready for two-day practices, Glenn and Jim. Uh, we didn't run. We didn't do sprints or run up mountains like some people. We would play tennis, we played all the time. Uh, we had great battles on the court, and uh, uh, we've had this conversation before, but I do remember beating Jerry more often than he beat me. Uh, uh, Jerry also had amazing success in uh, ba basketball and baseball, uh, dominating just like he did on the football field. He earned multiple honors in all three sports. Uh, a brief list of those accomplishments in football. He played varsity three years at Sandia. He was an all-city, all-state uh, uh, nominee. Uh, he was a lineman of the year. Uh, he was voted high school All-American. He played in the North-South All-Star <coughs> game. He played football three years at UNM, a full paid scholarship. In basketball, he played varsity uh, three years in a row. Baseball. Uh, same varsity three years in a row. He was voted at all city. Uh, he was all state. Uh, he was a, a unanimous, in fact, the only unanimous choice selection for the all attorney team uh, at the state championship. And he played a couple of years of baseball at uh, Colorado State. Uh, continuing 
his uh, leadership role several years ago, he suggested along with Gary Allen that uh, we organize annual reunions of our former athletes uh, here at Sandia. And to his credit, Gary's credit, we now get together and play golf, uh, talk about our glory days on Sandia's athletic field with fellow superstars like Mark Chafee and, and uh, 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 others. Uh, we also talk about uh, family, we talk about friends, we talk about the things that have really mattered to us. And uh, Jerry, by the way, holds the record for the most number of operations of any athlete <laughs> in our group. How many have we had so far? 24, 24 operations. Uh, these reunions probably wouldn't have happened without the efforts of Jerry and Gary Allen. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart because I reunited with Jeff Moldman, Bobby Hayes, and a number of, of guys that uh, were so important uh, to me growing up. Uh, Jerry continues to be a, uh, the most important role model as the patriarch of his beautiful family. He's got three of his wonderful grandkids here and his dear wife. Uh, he's, he's a devoted father, devoted grandfather, which in my book is all that counts at this particular point in our lives. Uh, he's so deserving of this honor that you've uh, bestowed on him, and I'm very blessed to have him as a friend. One more thing. <laughs> here we before, go. before Jerry gets up here, there's just one thing that needs to be clarified. The truth never precedes a good story. Well said, Jerry. Uh, Mike, you took up some of my time there. I got a few people that I want to thank. Uh, I got to start with our coaches, Coach Charles, Coach Altman. Uh, I'm not going to cry. Uh, I wasn't. I wouldn't be where I am without you two, along with Coach Landon Rose. So I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. We had a great group of athletes in New Mexico my three years in high school. And I gotta say something about Mike Temple from Highland who just used to just hit me so hard. That's why I have all these surgeries. And the Jones brothers, they were my heroes. Um, and the one guy that was my favorite was Robert Lee. And I thought he was gonna be here because I have a story to tell. He sent me that picture a couple weeks ago of an article in the Albuquerque Journal and it shows him tackling me from behind. And he said in the text that he sent to me, he says, see, I'm faster than you, I got you from behind. So I, I texted him back, I said, well, wait a second, wait a second. If you're faster, how did I catch the pass in the first place? So he texts back to me, he says, I let you catch that pass so I could catch you from behind. <laughs> anyway, uh, I also have to talk about some of the guys I played with. This is where it gets a little bit emotional. Um, 68, Jeff Mullen, 165 pound middle guard. It was the best middle guard I've ever, I've ever seen at 165 pounds. I love you. Uh, I wouldn't have made it through any of the practices without our lockers next to each other, even though you did call me Pooh. Uh, I don't know where that comes from. Mike Kenyon is out here. It's pretty easy to be a good receiver when your quarterback can throw at 70 yards in high school. He could throw at 70 yards, probably 75. Gary Allen. We joke a lot. And I know that you, you left me when we, I came over to your house to walk to Cleveland one day, and I've never forgiven you for it. <laughs> when I first came to Albuquerque, uh, I heard about Gary Allen. It's Gary Allen. He's this great athlete. Well, I was, I'm honored to have been able to play with him from ninth grade on, and we played the same sports. So we, we made each other better. Gary made me a lot better than I was because he was so great. Mike Luck. He said he was going to make me cry, but maybe, maybe I'll make him cry. I don't know. You are a hero. Um, you are my hero. It was a pleasure to be with you for seven years of football. 
I can remember you helping me out of bed when I had my first knee surgery. You were that, that great of a, a support for me. So um, I'm glad that we see each other once a month for breakfast. Problem is, we can't remember who paid the previous time, so our memories are going. So I think I paid the last two times. <laughs> <laughs> this last guy is, is, a, is a close friend, not just from an athletic standpoint. Um, he's been a friend since ninth grade. He asked me to come to his house and play basketball when I first moved here. And we've been together ever since and close ever since. He told me to marry my wife, and she's still here. She's still married to me. Um, best catcher I've ever seen. We wouldn't have met, won the state baseball championship without Mark Chafee. Um, he's the first guy to give my daughter flowers. He takes care of me now. Uh, so Mark. Last but not least, uh, I wanted to mention one other group of, of people. Mr. and Mrs. Bill Meyer, uh, Mike's wife, Melinda, it's her, her parents. They were such support to us all three years. Bill's not with us anymore. I know he would have loved to have been here. And your mother continued to tell me, you guys will beat Highland. Well, it took us three years. We finally beat Highland. I'll never forget her for that. So give her my love. Lastly, my family. Um, it's like Mary said, that's really what it's all about. I think my wife for taking care of me after all those surgeries. <laughs> um, my kids weren't able to be here. Uh, they used to joke around with me about me being old and wearing a leather helmet. And uh, we had a lot of fun with that. But the three special people that I'm lucky enough to get to see every day, Kean, Brody, and the, uh, the grandkids. If Robert Lee was here, I would say Robert Lee, Keenan, and Brody are going to be faster than you. <laughs> Just watch. And Nia, I want you to go home and tell your uncles and your mom and dad that you saw a picture of Papa and he did not wear a leather helmet. <laughs> Thank you very much. So it's a great honor for us to be asked here, me, and my family, and my two sisters. Um, we're all going to make it out here today for this, and it's a great honor for us. Um, from what I have heard over the years, in high school, um, my dad Jim was three sport letterman, football, basketball, and baseball. He was always very humble talking to his athletic achievements to us, so he didn't. He didn't talk to us a lot about him, but I'm sure you guys all have more stories that I've heard throughout the years. Um, he was known for making the uh, half-court shot in the state basketball game. Um, I think I've heard that story growing up forever, which is awesome. Um, however, he was better known for his ability to play baseball, especially catcher. Um, he he was a uh, he drove me to everything I know about how hard work is. Um, I know the stories that I've heard from all of you guys is that he worked relentlessly at any sport he picked up. Um, some of the stories from football include, I forget who told me this, but he said, uh, they're getting ready, the game was about to start and there's an offsides. Jim ran through the, my dad ran through the line and just knocked over the offensive lineman and, and his, his friend told me, he goes, oh man, this is gonna be a long game. But that's how he played. It was uh, tenacious and he played with a lot of pride. Um, after high school, Jim um, was recruited uh, to play at UNM for baseball. He played three years there and then was recruited by the Cleveland Indians and uh, played minor leagues for them for a little bit and then made up to triple A ball where he played there for years. Um, after that, he retired and came back home to raise her family, me and my two sisters. Um, from there, he went to play on fast pitch baseball. I remember going to many of those games when I was little. I um, played around on Jungle Gym and everything else. I think I even got that in Jungle Gym back in the day. Um, he played He played on this for a while, and I can remember uh, looking at his hands one day when I was little and going, why is every one of your fingers broke? <laughs> so all of you that knew him, he was pointing at me way over there somewhere, and then his pinky went the other way. And I remember asking him, I said, how did you break every finger on both hands? 
And he just told me, he goes, I'd be catching and I'd break a finger and I'd tape it up and switch my glove. And it was just, that's how he was. Um, along the way, he picked up tennis. He played tennis for quite a while and became quite good at tennis, winning many tournaments. Um, I remember him uh, breaking a few rackets along the way and yelling at himself. Never at the other players, but always at himself. Um, after he done with this, after he done with tennis, he became a great golfer. I remember him playing scratch. Um, and I remember him many hours just that night watching TV and he would sit there and practice golf swings for hours. Um, Jim had a way with people as well. I think he sold probably sporting goods to everyone in this room. Um, he, he sold sporting goods to everybody. I think everybody was coached to him or Haas. I, I, can't remember him ever telling me everybody's name, but it was Coach or Haas. Um, and then along the way, I picked up a few things from him. He would always tell me, he'd say, speak softly and carry a big stick, meaning you don't need to talk a game, but you need to prove it. And that's just how he played. Um, and then I always remember he always tell me, never look back and wonder if. Again, it was more of never look back and have a regret. Leave it all out there. And I know he would be honored today for this. Um, sorry. Me and my family are great, grateful to be here and honored. Um, thank you for this and you guys reaching out to us and finding us. Um, but I just want to say thank you to everybody for this. Thank you. Next up, Mike Puck. All right, this is an honor to introduce my hero. And there's a list of things I'd like to say about it. He was all city, all state in football, north, south, all star. A lot of people don't know, he was a tremendous track athlete, champion in the hurdles, champion in the shot put. He's a three-year starter at the Lobos. The Lobos. Uh, he was my first roommate in college, and uh, Mike just worked hard every day in practice, every day in games. He was a three-year letterman. This was back when freshmen were allowed to play. He would have been a four-year four year He was an academic all whack. Shows what kind of all-around athlete he was. He received the Colonel Bill Lightly Award for the top defensive player selected by the coaches. It doesn't stop at football. Mike is, is a well-rounded, great guy successful in his real estate business, goes on and on. Great family, he's beautiful like Melinda. Got two kids, and he's got two beautiful grandkids. It's an honor to introduce Mike Douglas. In the class of 1968, my hero. I was traumatized beyond words when I heard that he had passed 
and yet somewhat relieved that I can start building my own life without the stigma that I felt he cast on our, our family. At that point in my life, I was very shy. I was introverted. I had very little confidence in myself. Fortunately, football coaches, Clint Charlton, Jim Ottman, came into my life and became very positive role models that I desperately needed at that time. They were disciplinarians, especially Jim Ott. <laughs> we loved you when we hated your guts. <laughs> they reinforced the value of extra effort in everything that you do, and they showed me the importance of having a great and good work ethic. Any success I had on the football field in high school or college, I owe in large part to their encouragement and their confidence in me. I love team sports, but I decided I wanted to take an individual sport or tackle an individual sport where any success you had was a result of your own efforts. So I went out for track. And frankly, it was probably because I knew it would beat Jerry at first base. So I needed to do something different. I decided on running the high and low hurdles along with throwing the shot put, which I was told was quite an odd combination. But again, I was blessed to have two other coaches come into my life who patiently taught and encouraged a gangly sophomore the basics of those two events. Jim Wilkins and Bill Reed, many of you know, uh, were the perfect complement to my ongoing development and helped me achieve success in all three of those track events. As my self-confidence grew, I realized the importance of participating in other school activities, and I began to join organizations and run for leadership roles. When I graduated from Sandia, I was a completely different person than the shy, timid boy who had started school there three years earlier. I earned a full athletic scholarship to play football at UNM and went on to having a successful college football and academic career. When I graduated from college, I entered the real estate business. <clears throat> And I'm in the process of winding down a career now that has provided very well for me and my family. You played two years of UNM football and received a degree in education uh, in 1966 from UNM. He then turned around and taught in the Albuquerque public school system, starting at Duranes Elementary School in 1967, then Jackson Middle School in 1971, coaching PE, wrestling, football, and baseball and then moving to Manzano High School in 1975 where he coached football and baseball. His most memorable moments uh, by far, his marriage to my grandmother and his wife Diane, going on 56 years, knowing each other 61 years, also Sandia High School sweethearts. Don't know what's going on with that. Um, another memorable moment is uh, being the first college graduate in his family when he graduated from uh, UNM in 1966 with his education degree. Um, the birth of his son and daughter, Ken and Stacy, uh, being able to watch their successes in academics and athletics throughout their school years. Uh, both are graduates of UNM and successful in their chosen professions. Uh, they graduated from Del Norte though, so. Uh, his four grandchildren, myself, Tim, uh, my other guys, Joe, Jared, and Victoria, uh, he's very proud of their accomplishments uh, and having been able to be involved in their lives as we have grown up. Uh, and three of those four also from San Diego. Um, He's very happy to have his family here tonight, uh, as well as a very special friend, Al Gagne, living legend. Um, very honored being selected to the Sports Hall of Fame here. Um, and probably the thing he's most proud of is uh, he's honoring his parents tonight for providing him and his siblings uh, with the encouraging guidance to be successful in his own way. So he says thank you, Dad and Mom. Uh, Mo Barreras. Harvey Campton couldn't be here this evening, so our esteemed volleyball coach, Megan Holland, will say a few words about Harvey. Harvey Hampton graduated from Sandia High School in 1961. He was a three-sport student athlete. He played football, track, and wrestling. He was a member of the 1960 state championship and first ever Sandia state championship wrestling team. In 1960, he was first team All-City and a participant in the North All-Star team. He earned eight varsity letters and was named Sportsman of the Year in 1961 for Sandia. 
He went on to get a scholarship at UNM for wrestling after he graduated. Worthy Hampton. That rounds our student athletes, now our coaches. Don Torgerson's first. Uh, he couldn't be here. His son wrote a nice speech for me to read on his behalf. My name is Greg Torgerson. I am the oldest of Coach Don Torgerson's two surviving children. I currently reside in the Puget Sound area of Washington State. Now please understand that I get asked this question a lot of just how my late father became such a successful high school basketball coach. How did he do it? Pretty simple, really. Allow me to explain. Know that I shadowed my late father nearly each and every day from the first grade all the way up to ninth grade. Basketball was our life. It was everything. It was year round. Growing up in Albuquerque in the 60s, my father would leave his doodling laying around. This doodling consisted of hundreds of basketball plays clearly drawn out on a pre-printed pre uh, memo pad. The pre-printing of his memo pad was for playwriting, but that of half court of a basketball court itself with the lane, the boundaries, the, the half court marker, the free throw line and goal clearly printed on them. He used two different colored felt tip pins to draw the plays. Red was the defense, black for offense. The language in our home was no excuses, try harder, pick and roll, pay attention, set the post, high post screens, block shot, fast breaks, turnovers, rebounds, and full court press. And most of all, just show up. He was always scouting. I went on all the scouting trips with my father, from Heights Community Center to Well Park in downtown and northward into Corrales. He looked everywhere for the tallest and fastest sophomore players, year round. He never let up, never quit, never doubted, always pressing on with his championship plan. My father had a simple strategy. He recruited tall forwards and centers to control the boards. He then recruited the best and fastest shooting guards he could find in all of the state. He was always recruiting and would focus on sophomore talent. He would build his own teams and his players stay away and his players stay with him all the way. He was my father's basketball motto. He spoke these words frequently to his assistant coaches. I heard everything growing up with him. Control the boards, control the lane, control the lane, win the game. Defense wins every game. It's money ball with no one paid. Capitalize on your poor opponent's shooting. Be consistent. More shots at the net translate into more wins. Defense always wins. So there you have it. That was the secret in how he did it. Tenacity and discipline win every time. Enjoy your basketball heritage, Matadors. We thank you for this induction of our father into the Sandia High School Sports Hall of Fame from the Torgerson family, and we thank you for honoring our late father, Mr. Donner Louise Torgerson. Respectfully, Mr. Greg Torgerson. Last but not least, Clem Charlton, AD and coach. Oh my God. Jim Allman is gonna speak on behalf of our coach. I don't know if I made that microphone, do I? <laughs> I've never been real quiet. But uh, boy, it gives me a great pleasure to introduce my buddy into the San Diego First San Diego Hall of Honor. He's, uh, he and I started way back when I started in 1963. He was here in 58. We met at, uh, he coached the alumni football team at UNM. Back then we had alumni games in the spring. A high school coach would coach the alumni. That was my first year as an alumni. So he coached it. He asked me, uh, asked me if you need any coaches next year in San Diego. And he said, yeah. So I was here 33 years. I don't know, he's got the staying power, but uh, he's my buddy. You know, he, he told me five to, from two to five minutes he told me to talk. <laughs> The guy's 94 years old. I can, you know, can't speak two or three minutes on 94 years old. Cover all that time. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> Ten minutes. I, you know, I could, I could fill up all these sheets of paper and put it up here. But uh, you know, he, he's my buddy. He and I've been friends for 56 years now. And uh, 
gave me my first job at Sandia High School in 1963, and as I said, I was there 33 years. He's the first coach to win the first championship, state championship at Sandia High School in wrestling. It was football, wrestling, and golf. For several years, how many years did you do it? First year, first eight years he was here, something like that. They don't do that anymore. Everybody's a specialist. Now you coach one sport because y'all got all those off-season programs. We didn't have off-season programs. We just went just like these athletes. How many athletes now at San Diego School going to go three sports? Very few of them have ever heard any. You know, and that's the type of athletes he had and we had at San Diego High School in those early towns in 1960. These guys played everything. They love to compete. Of course, we had to put up with them, too. They didn't ever talk about that, did they? You know, now they're doing all this stuff that they're talking about. We're out there pulling our hair out, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, really, it's really nice. Plus, we had to put up with David Williams and Marty Watts. <laughs> that, was, that was their backfield coach. We're crying out loud. So we said, we had to put up with Marty Watts and David oh, Williams. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That's enough to get your, uh, get your hair up just a little bit. But he won, also won a golf state championship or two. He, he was San Diego High School back in the San Diego High School store. He got everything going. He and Don Torgerson, but he was special. He got everything going being an athletic director. He got everything going in the right direction. And uh, started all kinds of growing. ahead of the BE department at the same time. And uh, he'd been a pal of mine for uh, 56 years. Uh, he had to do it all. And by the way, he did wear when he played at UNM a leather helmet. <laughs> it's for an auction in the morning, let them help. Boy, there's some great athletes out here. I wish we could have them all back at one time. We had some good, good athletes. And he did it all. Coach, what else did he coach? Anything else? Remember the nothing? No. <laughs> you want to come up and say a few words, old man? Yeah. Come on. You can't hear either. No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm big old when they remember Thursday. One time in Ladera the next the next week at Arroyo. He's 94 years old and he still hits it pretty straight. He can't see where it went. <laughs> when you got up there, I turned my hearing aids off. <laughs> I'll tell you, we had, a, we had a great time. One of the biggest thrills we ever had is to, uh, I think Furlock mentioned a little bit about the Harlem Highland game in 1968, where we beat Highland High School 10-7 at Wilson Stadium. There have not been that many people at Wilson Stadium since. That game, if you ever saw pictures of it, they have people everywhere. And we beat him one heck of a football game, 10-7. And um, um, he was the head coach, and he did it the first time a city team to beat Highland in something like 10 years. So it was a special thing that these guys always remember. I'm sure those touchdowns got a little longer. Spurlock, the capacity cost for a touchdown was only about five yards. <laughs> Nowadays, it's about 51. <laughs> <laughs> We had some super athletes and a super coach, and he left. He's been my friend for a long time. He <coughs> got us going in the right direction for sport victories. Being able to have good coaches here at San Diego High School. So we, we owe him a lot. And uh, he's still hanging in there, still doing his thing, still hungry as hell. Uh, you know, he's, he, we won't let you help him do anything. And he said, I can do it myself. Well, I guess he can, because he always does it. How old? My career to that man for hiring me at San Diego High School because it's a great place. I stayed my whole career here at San Diego High School and spent my whole career with him. His wife, Jean, is over there too. Raise your hand, Jean. Jean's been with him too. She knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, Clem! Yeah, I know that. Never, when he gets in the car, he never does the seatbelt until the bell comes up. <laughs> so that's Matt Clem, seatbelt, okay. We have a lot of fun though. No, we, do. we have a lot of fun still. Even though I'm 17 younger, years younger than he is. So he, still <laughs> <answer them. laughs> he was Mr. Sandia, and he, so he comes to a lot of the Sandia basketball games, the football games, he's track of Sandia High School all the time. And, uh, he's just been a matador for all those years. He's been here in 1958. So, well, I would like to hear out there that had an opportunity to play underneath him. That's all I'm going to say, but anything else you want to add? We covered it. <laughs> he uh, played football at UNM 1942. 46 through 50. I was trying to make it longer than it was. <laughs> I will, but.
48, 49, they wore leather helmets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you ought to hear the stories this guy. He was, he was raised on Coral Island Central. The house on the corner. You ever go make a left off going east on uh, Coral Island, make a left, go down that house right on the corner? That's where he was born and raised, right? I can't hear. I can say anything. I mean, that's serious. He is certainly proud to have this induction in the San Diego Hall of Fame, and he's quite deserving. And he's just a good guy. He's a good chance to say, "Before we leave, please do." He's loving. He also, a month ago, was inducted into the UN Athletic Medal Alumni Hall of Honor. Not really. Uh, well, you were too. Well, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about me. Next year, maybe I can make it. You can get up here and talk. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be around next year, I'm sure. He's quite a guy, people. And, uh, make sure you go by and say hi to him before you leave. Thank you. Thank you. It definitely took a team to put this together. First, I want to thank Trish Royball, bookkeeper at Sandia. I'm Mary Ann Weems for the Hall of Fame gifts. My wife, Rebecca Weems, for her continued support and all of this. And if you're here, please just go um, you know, a little, a little way. Pete McFarland, former AD at Sandia Prep, for helping me get all this started and personally being my mentor. Larry Waters, former AD and Dean of Students at La Quay, for also helping me guide the way, get, guide, get, helping me guide the way in getting this started. Is he here? Um, Larry Waters. Mian Moores, AD at La Quay, for always pointing me in the right direction. Amy Lissick, Buildings and Grounds Assistant Principal at Sandia for helping us with the Hall of Fame board and being a huge supporter. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> Kent Mathis, All Sports Trophies, thank you for the Hall of Fame gifts, your help with the inductees, and your continued support. <laughs> Larry Dion's are our principal for your continued support, especially in athletics, and has really helped this whole process get off the ground. Steve Davis at ProView Networks for all the marketing and everything he's done. Appreciate it. Before I say committee, let's talk about Marty Watts. Wow. Without you, none of this would have been possible, Marty. Not only did you get the donors to help with the financial process, but you helped publicize this event with ProView. You lead Sandia Mandro, Marty. We really, really thank you. And we actually have a special appreciation gift for you. So if you don't mind coming up here, we would like to give you I'm, this, this song. Thank you.
girls basketball coach, Lee Kenny. Our current volleyball coach, Megan Holland. Our former coach and AD, Jim Holland. Former student athlete, former El Dorado football coach, David Williams. Hall of Fame induction, Mo Perez. Current track coach, I believe he's doing gym master tonight, so I don't know if he's here, Curtis Williams. All right, Marty, you gotta come back up here. Where's he at? All right, Marty, come on up here. Marty Watts, Pro View Network Sport for Student Athlete in San Diego. Last but not least, to loved, I loved hearing all summer with our, our, our current coaches, all the bantering back and forth, all the fun conversations and the history of Sandia, Clem Charlton. And we didn't forget about you, Larry. We got you a special t-shirt as well. Larry Dionzo. down because there's a lot we can say about Sky Holly. You've been so huge, huge in planning this event. Without you, none of this would have been possible. I want to personally give this to you as a token of appreciation. So there's one more person that is on that was on our committee that we do need to thank. That was the mastermind behold behind this whole project, and that was Brian Means. So he also gets a shirt, and a big round of applause for him. Mark, this is from Marty Watts. This is his, you know, recommendation, and he thought this was like, you know what, we need to do this at the very end. So I think everybody needs to stand up. Stand up. We are now going to sing the Sandia Fight Song, because the band is here to present it. Dreamstyle Remodeling has been wowing homeowners in New Mexico since 1989. Selected as Best Custom Home Remodeler for three consecutive years by readers of the Albuquerque Journal, we're also your exclusive provider for top home improvement brands like Renewal by Anderson, Four Seasons, Blaze King, and many others. Founded and headquartered in Albuquerque, Dreamstyle Remodeling is family-owned and now employs more than 500 people across the southwestern U.S. In fact, we've helped more than 60,000 
1,000 homeowners improve their home in New Mexico, Arizona, California, Idaho, and West Texas. We're committed to providing a superior customer experience. We've earned 4.6 stars with hundreds of online reviews and have an A-plus with the BBB. DreamStyle Remodeling is a proud supporter of UNM Athletics. Visit our beautiful 10,000-square-foot showroom at 1460 Renaissance Boulevard across from Sam's Club or DreamStyleRemodeling.com to make your home remodeling dreams come true. Lava Rock Brewing Company, conveniently located on Albuquerque's west side, just south of I-40. You can come on in, enjoy our pizza, pasta, burgers, and more by Matucci's. It's all at Lava Rock. Lava Rock Brewing Company, come on in.
I've got the last interview I'm doing today for this documentary is the guy I grew up in my neighborhood. I looked up to him as a hero. He was the great quarterback for the Matadors in 65. He he was very special to Jimmy Papan, and it was great to see his son come out tonight to do the thing, get his the plaque but the most importantly you you grew up with Jimmy Papan you grew up with all these guys Gary Rushing tell us what your thoughts are Jimmy Papan taught me how to be an athlete I mean his influence is uh, wow way over the top when it comes to my life personally he showed me how to prepare to be an athlete show me how to play baseball football uh, everything Gary Rushing who was inducted tonight on our behalf. He was the epitome of all athletes as well. In character, impeccable, great athlete, and... Uh, he has two PhDs. See, that's Gary Rushing. And then Eric Christian had a PhD, professor of the University of Kentucky. These are literally neighborhood kids, uh, friends of mine. Eric Christensen, he went to the same park and high jump there, where I met Jimmy Papan. Uh, what a neighborhood. And we all went to Sandia, had a great time. But well, one of the greatest athletes ever at the school is right here, Marty Watts. I mean, he played it all. He was an all-state athlete, was on that great Sandia state championship team that played Artesia in the Wool Bowl. And he's amazing. Uh, uh, event tonight. Congratulations. Well, it's a bulldog bowl, but hey, we didn't win the title. We got beat. You said Wool Bowl. That's a Wool Bowl. That's well, a Roswell. Bulldog Bowl. How can I get the? Well, they'll be mad at me down south. You know, I was never as good as any what you're saying. But the thing I wanted to do tonight is put on a great event for all the Sandia Matadors. And I think if I think I thought I did an okay job, but I thought the most important thing is to recognize these guys that you and I grew up with. They were our boyhood, you know, idols. And then seeing Mike Bucks, Jerry Spurlock, who might be one of the greatest athletes of all time. And seeing all, and seeing Judge Whitaker, you can you believe all the great people who produced two governors? Guy ran for president, somebody on Obama uh, uh, cabinet. What this school's? You know them all personally. I mean, <laughs> but I know a lot of them. You know personally. <laughs> well, I, I will tell you this: this school has produced some great people, including the greatest play-by-play -play guy. He started it all in high school sports as Henry T. And you'll go down as one. And of course, you're already in the Hall of Fame, the Mexico Hall of Fame. But, but you know what? It's probably tough to get in the Sandia Hall of Fame because these guys were great athletes. Wow. Again, what an honor to be here tonight. And what an honor to be with my buddy Marty Watts. And really, he's a humble man. But he made this night happen for a lot of worthy and grateful people. Well, I thank, thank you, Henry. And now we're going to go to the basketball game, and it's going to be, and maybe the Matadors could knock off El Dorado, our arch rival. Yeah, go get them. Go get them. Asha Baba. Ole. All right. <laughs> Hey, I want to thank all the donors who donated for this great banquet, this great event. And you'll see them on the screen here. But without them, we wouldn't be able to put this thing together. And God bless the Sandia Matadors, Ashababa Ole.